2021 brought us yet another destructive and active hurricane season in the United States, with Hurricane Ida causing catastrophic flooding in southeast Louisiana, Tropical Storm Elsa battering the Florida Panhandle with blinding rains and flash flooding, and Hurricane Nicholas striking Texas with wind speeds at over 75 miles per hour, all coinciding with four systems that delivered widespread flooding to the northeast. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you're all having a good day. I mean, a few days ago actually marked the last day of the Atlantic hurricane season, meaning the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season has now officially concluded. What I'd like to do in this video is kind of do an in-depth um, synopsis of this year's hurricane season, which was really um, remarkable to say the least. Although for the past couple of months, um, things have actually been remotely quiet. Um, prior to the prior to that point, I'd say we've had quite an active season though. The National Hurricane Center um, even actually reported that this year's season was actually the third most active year in hurricane history, considering we did actually have up to eight storms make landfall along the U.S. coast uh, this season alone. Now, I've actually gathered some data here to um, essentially differentiate this season from previous ones. Uh, by what you mean, for uh, for instance, 21 named storms were actually recorded this year's hurricane season. This actually places this hurricane season behind only 2020's record um, of 30 storms and 2005's record of 28 storms, meaning that puts us in third in terms of uh, hurricane activity. Although it may initially actually come off as an exceptionally high number on, of hurricanes, 2021's hurricane total of 7 was actually on par with the average 30 year average. This number actually equates to only half of the record setting 14 hurricanes um, from 2020. So uh, with that being said, uh, let's get into this recap. So to start off in late June, um, we saw Tropical Storm Claudette move ashore in um, Louisiana after developing in the Gulf, um, really kicking off this hurricane season and uh, the tropical activity. But uh, not, not long after this, we actually had two um, other landfalls that were relatively small scale tropical storms named um, Danny and Mindy. Um, other cyclones that made landfall in the United States also include tropical storms Elsa, Fred, Henri, and of course the hurricanes Ida and Nicholas. So in total, we actually had a whopping um, 19 named storms, including eight hurricanes uh, that actually made landfall in the United States over uh, the 2020 and 2021 hurricane seasons. So not just this season, including last year's season as well. Considering the continuing uh, recuperation efforts, the storm season of 2021 might um, also additionally emerge as being remembered as one of the most costly ever. The economic damage caused by Hurricane Ida alone totaled over $60 billion, making it one of the nation's most cost-effective storms. And um, speaking of Hurricane Ida, I'd like to go a little more into detail and sort of review that hurricane. Um, so to begin, Hurricane Ida was definitely going down in history books. This strong hurricane was actually full of energy and very powerful as it um, remained dangerous and destructive even as it reached um, regions like the Mid-Atlantic, hundreds of miles away, despite making landfall in Louisiana as a Category 4 hurricane in uh, late August. Um, so just to put into perspective how strong it was um, while being positioned in the Northeast. Um, so just after it already made landfall hundreds of miles um, northeastward, at least 50 deaths are actually attributed to the storm. We're in the Northeast as opposed to 26 in uh, Louisiana. So between the destruction, um, the lives lost, this hurricane uh, most certainly had a significant impact on so many people's um, lives across the forecasted area. And it's actually always uh, unfortunate to see these numbers pre present themselves once a hurricane is just ravaged through some of these areas. And uh, again, the damage here was also exceptionally um, expensive due to the storms collectively with Tropical Storm Elsa in, in July, um, Tropical Storm Fred in August, and um, Hurricane Nicholas in September, and of course, um, as I mentioned, Ida in August and September, causing um, in total collectively more than $1 billion in damage. So to describe a Hurricane Ida was really just one of those monster um, major hurricanes, really just a monster storm, something you do I never want to see uh, make landfall. What people fear most on hurricane seasons, Ida even forced storm surge flooding of um, possibly over 10 feet in parts of southeastern Louisiana and um, running up to about 16 inches of rain in uh, southern Mississippi. And throughout Louisiana's coast, um, winds gusted over 100 miles per hour. On its track, its strongest winds really hit New Orleans. They really got battered with the brunt of this storm, uh, with winds gusting up to 99 miles per hour. These high winds even damaged all eight um, electricity transmission lines supplying New Orleans. And nearly, um, and as, as a result of this, nearly 1 million people lost power across Louisiana alone. Hundreds of thousands of people also lost access to clean water as well. So really, Ida just reminded us of tropical cyclones. Uh, they pose a threat further inland as well. Um, which is really, it's almost like a dynamic storm, but it's really two parts. So we're going into detail about here. One, uh, where it initially made, initially made landfall in uh, Louisiana with winds um, over 100 miles per hour. And of course, once it coincided with a cold front, once it reached the uh, mid-Atlantic and northeastern area. And of course, brought a lot of flooding into those areas as well. Really just unbelievable flooding, which we'll get into right now. So despite being hundreds of miles from Louisiana, the um, epicenter, in early September, despite Ida's um, downgrading to a tropical depression, its circulation um, still paired with a previously stalled um, 
cold front to dump an additional 11 inches of rain across the northeast which is really just an inconceivable number um, when you're talking about uh, rainfall totals really an, actually it was actually even recorded that an hour-long downpour in um, central park on september 1st deluged three and a half inches of rain to the city on uh, the heaviest amount um, of rain in one hour there ever recorded and of course many of the surrounding areas in the northeast and mid-atlantic experience much of the same rainfall rates it's definitely a crazy event. The torrential rain um, immediately um, crippled major infrastructure, turned roads into rivers. A lot of these floodwaters also came down into subways and caused them to um, really submerge in this, these floodwaters that came rushing in in a matter of minutes. As a matter of fact, 12 different river gouges um, measured rec record levels of flooding in eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And of course, that's only the um, flooding perspective of it, of course. On top of this, as part of Ida, destructive tornadoes were also reported. Even in Mullica Hill, New Jersey, um, close to where I am located, an EF3 tornado was the um, first to touch down in um, the state over 31 years. So this don't really work a, um, a lot of records across the eastern seaboard. Highest damaging effects were actually estimated at about $65 um, billion by the um, National Oceanic and Atmospheric um, Administration. This actually makes it the most, um, the fifth most expensive tropical cyclone in U.S. history after Katrina, Hurricane Harvey, Maria, and Superstorm Sandy. So next hurricane I'd like to talk about here that actually appeared out there in the Atlantic was known as Hurricane Henri. Almost two weeks before um, Ida ended the to the northeast hurricane Henri actually um hit the southeastern coastline of the u.s before turning into a tropical storm near the uh, rhode island connecticut border um overall most of the eastern seaboard was spared from this one as most of the aftermath um from former hurricane um henry toppled trees and downed um, power lines across southern new england but anyway on our next tropical system of the season which actually happens to be tropical storm fred just days before hurricane Henri, tropical storm fred um triggered devastating flash flooding in western north carolina the same tropical system also um saturated the northeast in the days following um, Henri. So we're already um, gathering a lot of rainfall accumulation um, in the areas of the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic. And uh, additionally, Fred actually precipitated um, 29 tornadoes in the U.S. Um, among states like Georgia, um, all the way to Massachusetts. Really the same area, getting battered with rains and tornadic activity. It's definitely safe to say that the two most um, inimical impacts from Fred was the flooding and the um, tornadic activity on that um, front right quadrant. But uh, now on to our next tropical system, which was actually, um, which was actually one point category one hurricane. Uh, went out at sea and headed right towards florida um we have hurricane elsa occurring just over a month before fred it actually made landfall as a um, strong tropical storm not technically a hurricane but wind speeds very close to one topping 70 miles per hour and actually remained a tropical storm all the way until elsa transited on um, through the northeast in early july with um severe flash flooding and gusty winds so here we actually have the third storm making its way towards the northeast really all heading in the same track here this season so really a lot of these storms um made landfall in the gulf um including florida panhandle louisiana mississippi that whole um gulf um coastal gulf area so a lot of these conditions are actually favorable this hurricane season for them to just make landfall on the coastal gulf area and then quickly accelerate all the way into the um northeast mid-atlantic area and then of course make a lot of um dangerous impacts there because they really they all really seem to stall and slow down once they reach that area and just dump um more and more rain with each system really all heading in the same track um towards the northeastern area it actually took um, Tropical Storm Elsa about six weeks um, earlier than usual to become the first hurricane of the season in the Atlantic after becoming a named storm at the um, beginning of July. If we actually um, look closer here, we see that the, um, before hitting Florida's Big Bend as a tropical storm, Elsa made contact with areas such as Tampa St. Pete, delivered Category 1 hurricane strength. Now, if we actually really exclude Tropical Storms Elsa, um, Fred, and Mindy, which Mindy, which Mindy really isn't worth uh, mentioning, his impacts were so minor. Elsa and Fred still caused um, some flooding to the Panhandle in northern Florida. But aside from this, 2021 hurricane season was mostly a pleasant one for um, southern Florida and the um, Atlantic coast. And when I say Atlantic coast, I'm really um, really referring to the Carolinas and coastal Virginia. Because it really seems like the mid-Atlantic and northeast had more impacts from tropical storms than the um, Carolinas. Um, especially the Gulf. Of course, the coastal Gulf had some of the worst impacts from, the, um, from this year's hurricane season. With major hurricanes making landfall in uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas. Before we get to before we get to the hurricanes, I actually want to next discuss Tropical Storm Anna, which formed uh, the week before Memorial Day in the, in the northern Atlantic um, basin, um, thus developing before the um, hurricane season actually kicked off on June 1st. So this is really the first tropical system we had to develop out there. This actually this hurricane active season coincided with the um, La Nina's emergence in the fall, which really kicked off the more um, severe large scale um, hurricanes, which could also explain why some of these are developing so quickly before the official start of the hurricane season. Like the only reason I'm actually mentioning this tropical storm, tropical storm Anna, it didn't actually make landfall. It wasn't really too strong. I believe winds only reached only like a maximum of anywhere from like 40 to 50 miles per hour. It wasn't too much of a major system. The only reason I'm actually uh, reviewing this um, tropical storm is because, like I said, it formed um, the week before Memorial Day. So we're talking um, May here before June 1st. I believe it's actually the third year in a row that this um, occurrence has actually happened. 
where we did get a tropical system um, out in the Atlantic for Atlantic hurricane season. A tropical storm Anna is actually uh, significant this year. Our next hurricane we're actually going to talk about that actually did make landfall is actually um, known as Hurricane Nicholas. I actually did post a video on this at one point on my channel. Um, although it did actually reach hurricane status for a brief period of time, Hurricane Nicholas made an impact on the uh, northern Gulf Coast by bringing uh, very heavy rains to the area and of course um, a lot of that storm surge. We actually have to remember that this um, Hurricane Nicholas actually did make an impact on these same areas um, of the northern Gulf Coast to the same areas that were still recovering from the uh, devastating effects of powerful um, Hurricane Ida which made landfall in Louisiana, um, Louisiana over just um, two weeks earlier. Nicholas actually formed just after um, tropical, a tropical wave passed over the um, Yucatan Peninsula, really providing uh, favorable conditions for shower and thunderstorm development in this area. But um, Nicholas was really one of those hurricanes that uh, rapidly intensified. Um, as it was affected by several com um, competing different factors, which include some of the warm waters of the Gulf um, of Mexico, and of course the dry air and um, lack of wind shear. However, not long after, this wind shear actually did um, eventually make itself present, which uh, as a result, Hurricane Nicholas actually struggled to organize um, and form a coherent center due to um, the effect of the uh, southwesterly wind shear. As this was actually happening, it was still tracking northward towards um, the Texas coast. It was really the evening of um, September 12th, was when the center actually re um, redeveloped um, well to the north northeastern of the previous center, causing this track to really jump forward. But um, after redeveloping its center, Nicholas finally started to um, tap into the warm waters of the Gulf and began to strengthen right around the morning of the 13th um, as it approached the Texas Mexico border. However, Nicholas um, continued to be affected by wind shear throughout the day as the storm continued northward just off the Texas coast. But um, finally, the National Hurricane Center actually did end up reporting that Nicholas had, had become a minimal Category 1 hurricane with sustained winds of 75 miles per hour and actually did make landfall thereafter around 12.30 a.m. on exactly September 14th around um, Sergeant Beach, Texas. So still made landfall as a hurricane, so this is definitely making the um, hurricane landfall list this year. And Nicholas was not only the um, last hurricane to hit the United States in 2021, um, was actually also the last storm to land in the Atlantic Basin during this hurricane season. In the weeks and months following um, Nicholas, seven more storms formed over the Atlantic Ocean, but far from the U.S. Um, mainland. Um, during October, it was actually particularly quiet um, following the uh, um, abrupt demise of Hurricane Sam. Um, as, as of early October, um, Wanda was also um, the only former nor'easter um, to become a named storm. After the passing of Hurricane Sam, um, the region usually most active in hurricanes um, experienced an unusually um, dry air combined with the strong wind shear throughout the remainder of the, um, October. However, the deep dives of the jet stream in November that brought um, a lot of this cooler air into the eastern United States also increased wind shear over these same regions. Just to highlight and emphasize when the season was most um, active, I can confidently say anywhere from August to September, which is really um, most common to when um, most hurricane seasons, uh, most active months are. However, storms like Hurricane Elsa did actually materialize in July, um, so the recurrence of hurricanes outside of this time frame is definitely possible. But um, now to actually conclude this video, um, I'd like to review some additional information from this year's hurricane season and some of the uh, other an analytics. Now along these lines, um, assuming that we just backtrack the tropical storms Elsa and Fred, we see that the overall damage um, that I really expedited them into a um, billion dollar recovery process. Um, according to the National Oceanic Association, um, really joining Hurricanes Ida and Nicholas. I also feel like it's worth noting that um, I only reviewed the storms that made landfall on U.S. soil and had damaging impacts. However, there were even more hurricanes that developed in the Atlantic Basin that never actually made landfall in the U.S. or just didn't make landfall at all. Um, for instance, Hurricane Grace, which actually did unfortunately make landfall in Mexico, was known for its uh, rapid in intensification. It had some of the same characteristics as... Hurricane Nicholas, as it actually intensified from a tropical storm to a uh, major Category 3 hurricane in just 24 hours. Uh, the same hurricane actually battered eastern uh, Mexico's shoreline after developing in the Gulf in late August. So really, um, this was occurring at the same time of Hurricane Ida, around the same time frame. But uh, due to this rapid intensification of um, Hurricane Grace, it is actually considered to be the strongest non-U.S. hurricane landfall of the season. I believe it or not, there actually is still more hurricanes to go over, which includes um, Hurricane Sam, which I actually mentioned earlier. This um, was more of a resilient hurricane, um, which thankfully never made landfall, but did however maintain a minimum of um, a Category 3 status virtually um, for eight straight days. Um, the longest major hurricane to not weaken since Ivan in um, 2004. Um, but supposedly scientific um, drones actually detected 50-foot um, waves and 120 mile per hour winds, which is actually really rare um, for a hurricane to contain these winds for such a long period of time. Now, if this were actually just slightly to um, skew westward without weakening, the U.S. would have definitely faced mass um, devastation and destruction 
almost is really at the same level as Hurricane Ida, although that was a hurt to Category 4, this was a Category 3, but still um, very strong winds. Now, despite the strong major hurricanes occurring outside of the U.S. Um, and the numerous systems that um, swept um, the Northeast, Hurricane Ida will still always be the um, flagship Category 4 hurricane that made landfall in coastal Louisiana, making this hurricane season very significant and memorable. Uh, of course, along with other hurricanes, Nicholas, Elsa, and um, Grace, but still, or, um, Hurricane Ida definitely was the most impactful. But um, we also have to keep in mind here that now we are actually seeing this common trend every year, with a continuous rate of hurricanes growing stronger and stronger each season. Just considering the multitude of these named storms, the 2021 hurricane season is just another reminder that it is critical that you are aware of the uh, persistent increase in hurricane activity. So there you have it, guys. That's really the recap of this year's hurricane season. If we're actually all comparing it to um, past hurricane seasons, um, specifically um, the hurricane season in 2020, it's um it doesn't really seem that um abnormal however if we do compare it to um average hurricane seasons that we've seen um despite um the hurricane seasons of 2005 2008 and of course 2020 definitely well above average excluding the hurricane season from last year and now the um current average and from previous years before 2020 this is definitely a more active season with um so many different uh, major hurricanes major hurricanes meaning um category three and above um, so many of those different hurricanes occurring at once in the um, Atlantic Basin, between the Atlantic Basin and the Gulf, which, um, of course, the ones in the Gulf, um, many of them actually did originally in the southern Atlantic. But if you have a lot in perspective, this was definitely a very active season. But uh, so there's really your recap for this year's hurricane season. That's really all I have for today. I just wanted to go over and emphasize um, on the intensity of this year's Atlantic hurricane season because there was some serious activity going on out there this year. So um, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this year's um, Atlantic Hurricane Season analysis. Um, if you did enjoy this video, um, be sure to leave a like and possibly consider subscribing if you do um, find these weather videos and content that I make interesting. And um, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.